Hello everybody, my name is James Davies and it's time for another look at three pictures that I've taken recently. So these three photographs were taken with an Olympus OM10 and Ilford XP2 film. Ilford XP2 film is like the Kodak BW400CN film that I have spoken about before. It's a colour film that uses colour chemistry but the pictures are black and white and it's a really really cool film. The, the really good thing for me is it's, it enables me to use black and white film and send it off for developing with my other colour films which means that I can get all my pictures together in one place with one developer and I, I, I particularly like the photo developer developing service that I use but it also um, I actually like the the quality of the black and white images that it produces it has a very pleasing contrast range for me blacks are black whites are white if anything whites are a little bit too white is it it struggles without a filter to render white clouds the white sky can sometimes be um, blown out but on the whole uh, it's a really great film and I really love using it now the other thing about these pictures is they were taken on my trip at Christmas 2016 to Columbus, Ohio and you might have seen in a previous photo chat vlog that I was shooting some expired film in a Canon EOS 500 and I also had an Olympus OM10 with this XP2 film in it uh, and I also had a Pentax SBOT so what I'm confessing to is that I was carrying around three film cameras with me and I'm not going to apologise for that. It enabled me to have a, ca a really good camera for each film and to have a variety of films any time I went anywhere. What I had to do was carry a bag with me that, that could put all three cameras in and uh, I should have a photograph somewhere of, w of what wandering around for me was like when I decided I was going to be taking pictures. Two SLRs hanging around your neck and a, and a compact somewhere to hand. But it's such a treat for me to go to the USA it's such a fascinating country and it provides so many amazing photographic opportunities as far as I'm concerned that the um, the inconvenience of carrying all the cameras around is, is worth it, frankly. It's also not something I've actually ever done before, carried that many uh, big cameras around because I haven't had the, the EOS for very long. And as, as SLRs go, it's a lightweight camera. Uh, it's much lighter than the OM10. So it's not too big a deal to actually carry them around and it is really nice feeling to know that when you're wandering around you can choose a film or choose to have a like I say have a variety of films for the for the um, circumstances in which you might find yourself in however in this case it's black and white film in the OM10 so yeah all these pictures were taken on a walk around a, an area called Grandview in Columbus Ohio and it was in Grandview because they have a really cool camera store there called World of Photography I always want to go to this world of photography if I'm in that area. And since I was there, I went for a little walk around the nearest part of the town. It was a typical winter's day. It was overcast. It's fairly bright because it was the middle of the day. But there was nothing interesting going on with the sunlight. It was just white clouds. The black and white film, I felt, was, was more... Uh, I was drawn to it more than the two colour films that I'd got. That was a no-brainer for me. And... Really, I was just wandering around. I mean, I was just gone for a little walk. I think we were contemplating having lunch or something, but didn't end up doing it. So this was just photography by wandering around. So the first picture is Big Mama's Burritos and the beer and pizza sign. This is just so wonderfully American as far as I'm concerned. i tell you what I wanted to do with this picture. I noticed a lot of the pictures that... I mean, shooting in general, but particularly with the OM10, which is a nice camera... That, that takes nice pictures you don't I don't use the OM10 for for the lomography type stuff um, using funny films or bleeding bleeding extra light into it it meters the light very sensibly and it gives you a nice sharp picture so I, w I noticed I was getting pictures back that were off center or they were wonky you know the, the the horizontals were not horizontal and so on so I know when I was taking this picture I took a long time to make sure that the this very nice square building that gave me all these horizontal lines was nicely lined up uh, as best I could given the fact that I didn't want to I'm not particularly um, comfortable with street photography I never quite know whether I'm um, going to offend anybody or, or break any rules which is why there aren't always a lot of people in my pictures but I like I just like this squat square little building with a single car in the parking lot and the the massive beer and pizza sign and Big Mama's Burritos is just wonderfully, it's wonderfully American, really. But there are also details in it that, when I look at it, they remind me of being in the States. Um, the power lines, particularly those big bucket transformers 
they're a, a thing that um that you don't get in the UK. You get them in Japan. Japan is not shy from hiding its utilities about the place. And there's little details like the the sign on the telegraph pole for bus stops and so on. Well, this just looks like America, and it was a real nice picture to shoot. This one, a shop. I think it's a shop, possibly a restaurant. I mean, I expect it's a restaurant if it's called Sweet Carrot. I literally spotted it. I was walking, I think, down the main street, and this was in one of the side streets. What drew me in was this neon lighting. You know, I heard about the USA as a kid from watching TV. And over the years, you just absorb in different cultures and, and certain things stick in, stick in your mind about how you want a country to be. Even if the, even if the country isn't like that or, or the people who live in the country might disagree with you, you think, I've, I've seen the movies, I've seen the books and read the, book, read the stories and there's something about American signs that I'm really fascinated with. And this sweet carrot sign, it was just so joyous. You call your shop sweet carrot. I imagine going to the to the bank and the accountant and doing all the paperwork. What's it for? It's for a thing called Sweet Carrot. I mean, I just think that's great. And you actually got the people to fabricate a sign for you in neon tubing. What's it going to say? I want it to say Sweet Carrot. It's just gorgeous. Even even something like the fact that it's number 1417. I mean, in the UK, we're lucky if we get above 120 in terms of the street building numbering. You know, people leave, live at like number three, Archibald Street. They don't live at 1,417. You only get that in, in, the, in the States. So immediately when I see this picture, or I fact, more importantly, when I was taking the picture, I thought when my British friends see this picture, they will know that is from my trip overseas. Now I can see, looking at this picture, where the W and the A are, there is a vertical streak. And I can't decide if it's a light leak or not, or if it's something to do with weathering on the sign. I'm just going to leave that there because I, I, I don't really know. Photography by wandering around. You see a sign, or I see a sign, I stick my lens at it, focus it, and shoot. And this is what I got. Sweet carrot. And it's really sweet. And finally, another wandering around, quickly stop, quickly shoot picture. This is a telegraph pole where, evidently, over the years, many notices have been stapled to it, saying, I don't know what the notices might have said because they're not there. But you know the kind of thing. I've lost my dog, my band are playing, I found your dog, and so on and so forth. And immediately when I saw this, I knew that the OM-10 had got all this lovely focusing. I knew that the XP2 film would do that focusing justice. And I thought I could do something interesting by getting this in focus and the background out of focus. It's really, it's pretty cheesy photography idea, really. It's not going to win any awards, and it's not as if it's never been done before, but... It was just one of those things where we were going back towards the car and I was like, hang on guys, I've got to take a picture. Because this sort of thing, I didn't want to leave it behind and not and not shoot it. It's not like some amazing scene that has to be recorded. But, you know, we don't have, really have wooden telegraph poles in the UK. I hate, I sound so, um, I sound so so British talking about the differences between the US and the UK but if I think out to my own street and and different places we mostly have metal ones so you don't get you might get uh, a wooden one covered in staples but it would be it would be the exception rather than the rule so again there is something American in this picture for me there is something when taking this picture and thinking about my UK audience that they might look at that and think, wow, that's for, again from, from Jim's, uh, one of Jim's trips to the USA. And I'm pleased that when I look at the picture that there's a nice range of tonalities going on. And in particular, that the rusty staples are as black as the shadows in the building in the background that's out of focus. But other than that, some really interesting verticals and angles diverting from the vertical going on in this because of the weathered old wood. I guess I could have just taken a picture of the weathered old wood, but if I hadn't put the car in the background for context, it might not have been clear that this was in Little Town. So there you have it. Some photography by wandering around. Some black and white photography. Some photography from another country. And some photography with an Olympus OM-10 and Ilford XP2 film. If you like the channel, if you like the videos, if you just feel like it, why not leave a comment or a like and I will see you in the next one.